The metal barrels come in two different styles commonly. One is the type that has a removable lid that has a band that goes around the top and that lid clamps on. That seems like that'd be easier to use, but it's more difficult for this project. So you actually want the barrels where the lid and the top are actually folded into one solid piece of metal. So the whole barrel is one solid unit, like the type that we have here. Um, we will be removing the lids from that and I'll show you how. You wanna make sure that the bottom that you have here um, is a solid piece of metal, that the end right here is a solid piece of metal that joins with the outside of the barrel, um, that it's not any sort of a clamp that holds it on. Um, it's much, much easier to work with this way. Um, try and get a one-time use barrel if you can find it. These things are used in lots of industrial applications um, and they're kind of throwaway goods in a lot of industrial applications, so it's not hard to find a single use barrel. On the side right here um, and down in the bottom, you can see that it's not perfectly clean. It's got some little rust patches in it. This is the barrel I'm gonna use for the outside. You've got nice clean material here. You've got rust out here. Down in the bottom there, you can see that there's a lot of rust on that too. If you clean it pretty well, in theory, you can get away with having that be your inner barrel, but I'd like to not risk it. And I'd like to have the inner part of my barrel be nice. But you can see the inside of this is fairly nice. Um, it's fairly clean, it's all fairly uniform. This is one of the barrels that remained sealed and only had oil in it. Um, so this is gonna be my inner, inner barrel. If you can get them all like this, do that. The way that these lids are attached is they're actually two pieces of metal. The outside of the barrel is one solid tube, it's a solid cylinder, um, and then you've got the barrel that, the lid that fits on top of the barrel, and that lid has a little bit of a cup shape to it. It's got the flat surface that's the lid, and where it meets the side of the barrel it comes up like this. And then where those two pieces of metal meet, the way that they seal these things together is that you've got some overlap right there. Um, and then they've got a machine that comes around and folds those pieces of metal together. It curls them over the top of each other. So you get two pieces of metal that curl over and around each other like this. And the way that we are gonna get this barrel off is that we're just gonna grind through that top layer of metal and then it'll allow this next piece to fall through. We're gonna be reusing these barrel lids for a number of parts of the project that you guys have probably already seen. One thing that I've found to be really finicky about that is none of the edges of the rims of these barrels are perfectly round. Um, they all have their tiny little variations in them because they've been hit on one side or in shipping, they got dinged up, but whatever, they have their imperfections. So if I take a lid off of one and I try and put it on another, it never quite fits just the way that I want to. You can make it work, but it's kind of a pain. So as much as I can, I try and keep track of which, which lid came from which part of a barrel. Um, and I also try and keep track of what parts were lined up with what parts. So basically, the short of that is I tend to put a piece of tape on this. Um, you can use a marker as well. Marker's probably a little more reliable on that front. Take a tape piece, uh, piece of tape, and I put it along the side of the barrel, and I l go over the top of that lip, and then onto the top of the barrel as well, right there. And then when I grind, I'm gonna grind a, uh, along this rim right here, and grind through it, and then when this thing comes loose, I'll be able to still see that piece of tape on either side and line up those edges. Here we've got the outer barrel, um, and that's the simpler one that we're gonna be working on. Um, it's more involved for the cutting that we do, but it's simpler in concept. Basically, all we're gonna do is make sure that the, the rims that make the end of the barrel end up getting cut off and removed um, because they're gonna be in our way for something that we need. And then we cut the barrel down to a given length and then we'll do what's called tabbing on the ends. Um, and the tabbing does a couple of things. The most important thing that the tabbing does is that it uh, if you've got, if you're looking at the barrel and cross section, and my arm is the outside layer of the barrel right here, what we'll do is we'll create a whole bunch of cuts in the very end on it, um, and then we'll fold those cuts down, and they'll stay at a 90 degree angle like this. And then when we set this outer barrel on top of the inner barrel, my fingers, which are the tabs, maintain a set distance between the inner barrel and the outer barrel. And that helps to make sure that you've got enough space for all of the exhaust gases from your J-tube 
to come up here and move around the barrel and exchange their heat but not get pinched down. Um, you don't want that to be too narrow because otherwise that creates a pinch point and they can't flow. Um, so the outer barrel is how we create that set distance. We cut the outer barrel to what length we want it to be um, and tab those ends down. 